Okay, welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I am your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger, and we're here with another episode for you guys. Today we're talking about the worst trait of the Scorpio parent. One of you audience members specifically asked for this video, so here it is. First, a few housekeeping items. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel for your free weekly Positive Parenting with Astrology content. You can sign up for my mailing list to get freebies, including special offers uh, on free books, free chapters from my books, astrological forecasts, how they're affecting you and your kids. And my uh, calendar is still open for astrology readings. You can find the link to book in the video description. If you are in the Washington, D.C. area where I live, I will be doing a few book events related to Scorpio children and my book on Scorpio children around October Halloween season, which is also Scorpio season. So you can uh, contact me for those for details on those events. And when those event links go live, I will include them in the video description. Okay, so let's get down to it. Okay, as per usual structure, we're going to go over a high level view of Scorpio energy. We are going to talk about what I consider to be the worst trait of the Scorpio parent and why I consider it to be the worst trait of the Scorpio parent. And if you are a Scorpio parent yourself, we're going to talk about how you could effectively use this trait in a way that does not damage your attachment with your child. So Scorpio, it's a feminine energy water sign. It's a fixed sign. It is fixed water. That means that Scorpio people tend to dwell in their emotions. They have very intense emotional experiences. You know this if you've seen any of my videos on Scorpio kids and the Scorpio nature in general. To the Scorpio, they would rather feel bad or feel negative emotions than feel nothing. They cannot feel nothing, which is why if you're a Scorpio parent, chances are when you were a kid, you would have big dramatic, what we would consider dramatic emotional outbursts that were kind of normal for you. You consider them normal because they're just kind of displays of your inherent nature. You have these intense emotional experiences that as a kid, you were not able to effectively articulate and you needed your parents' help to process, articulate, identify, process, and think through those emotions, right? So I talked to a lot of Scorpio adults who did not get that experience as kids. They did not get the emotional validation they needed and that understanding that this was a part of their nature and there's nothing wrong with this. But that's the main takeaway is that the Scorpio nature has these intense emotional experiences and they need to feel kind of the breath of of human emotions. Scorpio is also known in the astrological community as the great investigator. Scorpio people love to probe. They love to get to the bottom of things. This is one um, trait that, that lends itself really well to the Scorpio parent because they inherently know things. They can intuit a lot about what's going on with their kids, okay? Even things that are not apparent outright. But they love to get to the bottom of things. They can be relentless in the pursuit of what they want. That's a clue as to what we're talking about later. We're going to get into that in a little more detail here in a few minutes. But they hold very fast to their ideals and what they want. And in keeping with the investigative probing nature of the sign, interested in depth, right? Whereas Gemini is interested in covering a lot of ground, but kind of superficially, that's me, uh, guilty. Scorpio is the opposite. They like to probe things in depth. And when they decide that somebody is worth their time, that that person is worth their energy, that that person... um, is there to bat for them, is going to support them, is going to be somebody good to keep around in their life. They want to get to know everything about that person. We've talked a lot about that trait when we talk about Scorpio children. It's one reason why Scorpio kids like to snoop on the parents is because they like to get to know everything. So when the Scorpio is the parent, that's still the case. They like to get to know everything about the kids. And to some children, especially children with a lot of heavy air energy in their chart, that can feel a little bit invasive. Scorpio people bond very closely with the other person in the relationship. We've talked a lot about this and the risk of enmeshment, right? When you have this attachment that's so close, the boundaries are blurred between you and the other person. And enmeshment is psychologically unhealthy, okay? I always have to remember you are a separate entity from the other person. They're different than you, okay? Even if you gave birth to them, they're still a different sovereign entity. 
With water sign energy, there's almost always a risk of that enmeshment, of that blurring the boundary lines between you and the other person. So as a Scorpio parent, it's important that you recognize that about yourself. So you take steps when you think that, when you start to realize that you may be overstepping the boundaries of your child, especially as the children get older and crave increasing independence, which they should have in an age appropriate way. The other main thing about Scorpio people that I bring up is that Scorpio craves vulnerability in a relationship. They crave to really be seen and heard, right, in this close relationship, but they're also afraid of the vulnerability because it almost always brings emotional pain. So I point this out to parents of Scorpio kids because the Scorpio children will often say things that are very hurtful or do things that are hurtful to the parents. That's what we call the sting of the scorpion but it's because they're afraid of being hurt. They're afraid of being hurt, so they lash out first. It's almost like sabotaging the relationship in a way, so they're not hurt themselves. So if you're a Scorpio parent who has a lot of healing to do, working on your own triggers, this is something you're gonna have to spend a lot of time working on. You, there may be times when you feel personally hurt by things your kids did, and it may not be that your kids did anything to intentionally hurt you. It may just be that they're, growing up and becoming increasingly independent and they don't need you as much and it's tough not to take that personally because of the close bond we have with our kids but that is developmentally normal and it's not about you the parent that's developmentally normal behavior and we want to raise eventually independent kids you're always going to have to pay attention to your boundaries with your kids and make sure you are modeling healthy boundaries for your kids as a Scorpio parent. And we go into Scorpio nature and healthy boundaries in detail in a lot of videos. So I'll only mention it here. Okay, now we're going to talk about the worst trait of the Scorpio parent. Before we get to that, I want to say that a lot of people would tell me that in their opinion, the worst trait of the Scorpio is vindictiveness. Scorpios, I don't want to say have a penchant for revenge. It's known as a sign that likes to take revenge. Revenge can be satisfying. I mean, I'm not going to deny that, but you want to make sure you're thinking about past events in a healthy way. Regarding the trait of vindictiveness, I have a lot to say about this, so I'll try to keep this brief. I don't think it's a bad thing for, we're talking about the Scorpio parent in this scenario. I don't think it's a bad thing for the Scorpio parent to remember the wrongs done to the child, okay? Because you'll learn from past experience, I don't want my child to be in this situation again. I'm going to take steps to guide my kids, teach them, educate them on how to avoid this situation again, or how to maintain healthy friendships, or to come talk to me if this happens again. I don't think that's a bad thing, okay? You don't want to ignore when bad things happen to your kids and by bad things here, I'm talking about things that maybe are questionable, not emotionally healthy. I've mentioned a lot on this channel that in the traditional school environment, teachers are focused on um, controlling behavior in order, to get, in order to get through the teaching material. They're not really there to help your kids be emotionally or psychologically healthy. I have a lot of different examples I could, I could um, cite about that. For example, if something happens at school where, where you think that's questionable or a teacher said something to your kid, for example, a teacher told my kid, why do you tell your parents about things that happen at school? They, they were trying to discourage my kid from telling his parents what happened at school. Why would you do that? Why would a teacher discourage a elementary school child from talking to his parents about what happens at school? Big red flag, something you want to pay attention to. I don't think it's a bad thing to remember and not shove under the rug things that happen that you find questionable or things that you don't like as a parent. You know, one of my other um, points in my experience with this is that the people I often find, not 100% of the time, but I often find that the people who don't like vengefulness, the people who tell you, oh, just forget about it, don't worry about it, many times Either they have an interest in you forgetting about the thing, the bad thing that happened to you, or they are the people doing the things you are vindictive and vengeful about. So they have a direct interest in you forgetting the things. And I have a lot of experience with that because growing up in a you know traumatic, emotionally abusive household where you're gaslit consistently, almost daily, 
you know, your abuser has an interest in you forgetting and not being vengeful about the things that were done to you. So when somebody is encouraging you to forget about something that was that was done to you that was bad or wrong or that you know traumatized you in some way, big red flag. Now, it is obviously emotionally and mentally unhealthy for you to hold on to those bad things and not deal with them and not process them. And that's not what I'm encouraging you to do, obviously. Bring them up, talk about them with other people, mental health experts, therapists, and work through those things. And you can kind of remember them and have those memories crop up, but they don't have to be as traumatic to you when you remember them as when they initially happened to you, if that makes sense, right? You can get, you can get to a point where you remember those traumatic things and their memories and you know they're there, but they don't, they don't traumatize you like they used to, okay? So what I'm suggesting here is you don't necessarily have to forget them and push them under the rug and repress them, which is also very bad, but you can process them and deal with them. And the best revenge is to be happy and live well and make these people that did wrong to you completely irrelevant in your life, okay? So all this to say that I don't think the trait of vindictiveness is that bad for these reasons. And as the parent, right, you definitely want to pay attention to questionable things that happen to your child or things that your child is telling you that you get upset about. You want to be an advocate for your child. And Scorpio people are very private and reserved. And they are, however, they are capable of fighting. And if it's for their kid where the stakes are high, they are very capable of fighting and advocating aggressively for their children. And I love that. I don't think that's a bad trait at all. I also want to say one more thing that it does, it does not mean that you are required to forgive anybody who did you wrong. I don't, I mean... Yes, Buddha encourages us to forgive and wish and wish well to people that did us wrong. Fine. But I don't think you have to forgive people who traumatized you in order to heal and work on your own healing from the trauma. That makes sense. You're not required to forgive and forget, okay? Or even just forgive. I just also want to make that point. Okay, so the worst trait of the Scorpio parent, in my opinion, is relentlessness, okay? Scorpio people are relentless, can be relentless about what they want, okay? They have a probing nature. They like to get to the bottom of things. That's why they make good detectives and good psychologists and psychotherapists. Now, when the Scorpio parent who's very intuitive intuits there's something going on with the kids, right? And the kids maybe aren't completely forthcoming or they say everything is fine. I don't have anything to talk to you about. And the Scorpio parent intuits that that's not true. There's something going on. There's a tendency for the Scorpio parent to probe, probe, probe consistently and to wear the child down until the Scorpio gets what they want. In what we call an undeveloped Scorpio parent, this tendency exists to want to get their own way. So one thing is the Scorpio, one scenario is a Scorpio parent intuits something is going on with the kids, wants to get to the bottom of it. The second scenario is the Scorpio parent wants something, whatever, and the kid resists it, especially as kids get older, adolescents and teens, they have they display more counter will, which if you read Gabor Mate is a, is a normal uh, phase of childhood development where they're a little bit resistant to the parent because they're expressing their own will, completely normal. So the other scenario um, is where the parent wants something and the kid resists it and the parent just basically relentlessly pressures the child until the child gives in because the child is tired of the pressure. And when I was growing up, that was the case. So my mother has a Mars in Scorpio, um, relentless placement. So the Mars sign often uh, informs how the chart holder pursues their goals, okay? So I'm heavy air energy, as you guys know, uh, um, air sun and air rising, and I'm very susceptible to pressure. And as a kid, when you're c confronted with that relentless push and pressure, you, you give in a lot of the times because you want the pressure to stop. So this is what I want to avoid with you, the Scorpio parent, this pressuring your kids until they either give in and then they resent you because they resent the pressure you are exerting on them or this continuous probing until they talk to you. 
The way to get your kids to open up to you is to spend lots of pressure-free one-on-one time with them. And when they decide to open up to you and become vulnerable with you, you listen, you validate feelings, you do not blow up or criticize them. You do not use that as a moment to criticize them or correct them. You listen, you empathize. If they need help with a problem, what do you think we should do about this? You can ask if, if they want help with it. Um, if it, you can ask, you can encourage them to explore whether or not that was a good decision that they made or a good thing that they did. But those are ways that you can find out what's going on with your children and preserve the healthy attachment instead of this relentlessly poking at them or asking them or putting them on the spot. When kids feel, especially adolescents and teens, when they feel put on the spot like that, they do not like it. They may react aggressively, combatively. They may just uh, cave and give you what you want, but then resent you, or they may flee, okay? In, uh, in any case, those, those uh, responses don't help to preserve the healthy attachment and connection. If you are interrogating your children and pressuring them until you get the information you want or they do what you want, they're going to eventually avoid your company, avoid confiding in you, avoid talking to you, and they're going to become more adept at hiding things from you, okay? So you want to be very careful with how you are interacting with them in this scenario when you may intuit something is going on and you're probably right. Scorpio have great intuition. You're probably right that there's something going on. But you have to spend time with them one-on-one and make so that they feel safe and comfortable opening up to you, and they eventually will. They will eventually realize you are a safe person to confide in. And Scorpio parents are very good at providing affection to children, especially when they're younger, and creating this safe space for the kids because they know about the power of vulnerability. They crave vulnerability. So when their children are vulnerable, they respect that and they see that as a good thing. So a few more ideas on what you, the Scorpio parent, can do to make sure you are involved with what is happening with your children and maintain the healthy attachment. We already said spend lots of pressure-free one-on-one time doing fun things. Respect if your child is not ready to talk. If you're not, they're not ready to talk, tell them, that's okay, you don't have to tell me right now, you can tell me when you're comfortable. Then just drop it, go do something else. Praise the child's efforts, forgive the child when they mess up. We all mess up, you know, forgiveness is a very powerful thing. Again, when you honestly forgive the child, that is the, you're showing the child that, wow, whatever they do, you will love them unconditionally. There is nothing that they could do, right? Even bad things that would make you love them any less or any differently. But all these things together create space for the kids to come forward when they feel comfortable. So that's it on that topic today. Our next video is going to be also a video request from one of you, the top three traits of the Scorpio parent. I'm very excited about that. Also very excited that Scorpio season is right around the corner. Okay, so we will be back soon and thank you for your attention. And as always, please leave your questions and comments below for me. Thank you.